<laughs> I was waiting for the cameraman to tell me to start. <laughs> Good evening, Livonia Church of God family and friends and our family and friends around the world and around the states. Um, Pastor Adam and I are here this evening right in the sanctuary here at Livonia Church of God. And we wanted to uh, welcome you to our live Bible study this evening. And just I want to encourage you to, as you log on and we give a few minutes for people to, to jump in here with us, uh, I encourage you to like and to share this live stream. And uh, that definitely helps us. And please dialogue with us. We've got uh, individuals that are uh, able to respond to you, share with us uh, prayer needs, the things that are going on in your life, and certainly comment and respond as we uh, look into, into God's Word tonight. And I uh, want to just, uh, we're just going to go ahead and, and, and jump right in uh, into Isaiah 61. And as we reflect upon things, and uh, I, we're going to get to kind of, we're going to have some time at the end to pray, but I want to just jump right in as we reflect upon Isaiah 61. It is a powerful passage that not only is, is, is a passage that speaks to us uh, today, but understand that Jesus, when he stood in the tabernacle, when he stood in the temple, he read and quoted out of Isaiah 61. We don't know if it was the reading of the day um, or if it was selected by Christ, but it, it was uh, extremely divinely appointed for him to be able to share and to read Isaiah 61 and the fulfillment of that uh, scripture. And, uh, and so uh, we're able to, to come to that as we look into it. Pastor, I'd like to um, pray over us before we actually mm -hmm. dive into the Word because the Word of God talks about that the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals the mysteries of yes. God's Word. So before we actually dive in, mm -hmm. I just want to pray prayer blessing over this time um, really quickly. Mm -hmm. Father God, we're thankful that we can come together and we can connect with one another through this video medium. Um, but more than that, it kind of reminds me, Father God, that we can connect with you. We don't see you either, but we know that we can connect with you. And we connect with you through your word. And Jesus, you said that you give, have given us the Holy Spirit to um, reveal the very mysteries of God to us. And I just invite you and ask you, Holy Spirit, come. Come into the sanctuary. Come into the sanctuaries of our hearts. Come into the sanctuaries of our homes, um, uh, out there in the community and around the land and world. And we just ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and open up our minds our hearts and our spirits to you. And we just invite you um, to heal us and to encourage us with your word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. Isaiah 61 in verse 1 says this, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Uh, when we uh, really reflect and, and, and we look to this, uh, one of the things that really jumps out at me is uh, three actions that God declares that he is going to take. And these three actions are very appropriate for us as we contemplate this in today's environment, certainly. Um, the first action that he says that he's going to heal the brokenhearted. I know that right now that uh, our hearts are heavy and many hearts today, not only in our state or nation, but in our world, are broken as we uh, reflect upon the adversities and the crisis uh, that we are going through. And I am so encouraged and so thankful uh, that we have the promise uh, that God is able to heal the brokenhearted. And so no matter what it is that you're facing and going through, whether it's coronavirus related or not, 
I just encourage you to surrender it and to turn it over to the Lord and allow him to be healer and to heal uh, our hearts that have become broken or that have become wounded. And, and God will be faithful to be able to do that. I just want to encourage you, you know, when we come into this season, we um, are not only broken from this season. I've really been feeling the heaviness this week, and we are really experiencing loss. It is so surreal to walk through the grocery store, and we're so used to seeing everything just there, and it's not there. And I'm reminded that we are grieving. But even though we're grieving this loss, Pastor, there are so many times that we've already experienced loss prior to this season. And so some of us may have like little cracks in our lives or maybe something's been trying to be mended back and we've used our own super glue <laughs> instead of using uh, God's spiritual super glue from Isaiah 61. <laughs> Uh, we can try the best that we can, but we're not the heart mender. He is. And so I just want to remind us that um, you can speak that over your life. You can go all the way back. It may be something that broke you when you were three years old. And you can say, Jesus, you can bind up that brokenness in my life. Lord, restore it in such a way that I have no power to do that, but you do. And that's exactly what why you came. That's why you declared it that day in the synagogue. Because you wanted generations to come to realize, hey, I'm the heart mender and I'm the deliverer. The second action that we see in Isaiah 61 is that he is going to proclaim liberty to the captives. And in fact, he, can, he kind of expounds upon that and talks about opening of the prison to those who are bound. And in the, I would imagine that at this point, depending on where you're at in the uh, so, social distancing and staying at home and all of those kinds of things, uh, that there are a lot of people that today feel as if they are prisoners in their own home or they are captive uh, within the walls of their home and cabin fever is probably setting in. And, uh, and I just want to encourage you in, in, the, in the current uh, status of where we are that our liberty, our freedom, the openness that we have is not based upon walls and doors that surround us, but it is based upon uh, the spiritual and the emotional and the mental and the emotional freedom that we're able to have in Christ. And so try not to uh, allow yourself to go stir crazy because of walls closing in or uh, and frustrations with uh, what we can or cannot do and things being closed and can't go into certain places that we want to go to. But allow the Lord to really proclaim that liberty and that freedom emotionally, mentally, uh, and, and everything that we face and everything that we do, He wants to come and open up the, those prison doors. And, and from things of our past and things that bind us, even spiritually, going a step, looking beyond just the coronavirus circumstances, uh, that there are things within us that constrict us. And maybe it's been mm -hmm. through this time of being alone and, reflect, and, and reflective that you've realized maybe there have been some things that are, uh, that are inhibiting you and binding you that yes. you nev never even realized. And I encourage us to be able to lay those things down before the Lord because the Lord came to proclaim liberty, freedom and uh, to open up those doors and to release the chains and the, and, the, and the binds that have constricted us and that have prevented us from fulfilling who we are in Him and our identity in Christ. You know, Pastor, while you were talking, um, I wrote down in my journal, and I, I hope I'll stop there and say I hope that maybe you have your Bible and your journal out with you tonight just like I do, and I'm actually taking notes. I may be <laughs> sitting here right beside him. But I'm taking notes and I wrote down uh, a picture that the Lord put in my mind. And, you know, when uh, World War II ended and the Nazis had signed over release to the Allies, the people that were bound in the concentration camp, they did not know. We actually have film footage and documents of troops going in. Allied troops going into concentration camps to liberate people who had been in captivity. And the only thing they knew 
was that the Nazi soldiers had hightailed it out of Dodge, but they were still behind the wires and the walls of the camp. I wonder how many of us tonight kind of feel like that, that we're still behind the wires and the walls of a camp. We know that the war is over. We mm -hmm. know that Jesus has, has saved us, mm -hmm. but we're still entrapped. And I hear the Holy Spirit just coming out and he's saying, I'm proclaiming to you, you're free. You don't have to stay in here anymore. You don't have to wear the striped clothes anymore. You don't have to, to live without anymore. You are free. He's proclaiming it to you. He's proclaiming it to me. He's reminding me tonight. Tina, you're free. I want you to be reminded too as well, family and friends. That's right. And allow him to be able to do that. The third action that we see the Lord taking, it's there at the end of verse 2, and he says that he will comfort all who mourn. And, uh, and, and he even goes into the beginning of verse 3, kind of this re-emphasis to console those who are mourning in Zion. And when I think about that whole, the idea of comforting all who mourn, there are that comfort that God is able to uh, surround us with. We know that when the Lord promised us in Acts 1, 8, the, the promise of the Holy Spirit, that He was going to uh, fill us with that power, but uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we understand that the Holy Spirit is not just about the boldness and about the fire and about being His witness, but the Holy Spirit has been given to us uh, as a comforter, that He is a comforter. And I uh, encourage us that one of the things that is so great about living in this uh, New Testament day of the church age is that we are able to sit in our living room or wherever we are tonight. And while we may not be in the sanctuary or the tabernacle uh, together, we are able to understand that the presence of God transcends and He is able to be just as real with us. The Holy Spirit that Tina was referencing that, and just uh, hearing His voice in her heart and mind as we're sharing this tonight, uh, that the Holy Spirit is just as real in your living room today. And I pray that He will bring a comfort to you Comfort from anxiety, comfort from fear, comfort from being overwhelmed, comfort from mourning that which is lost. Uh, there's a lot of things that we have become very mindful of in recent days and even looking ahead, whether it's our seniors, uh, high school seniors, college seniors, and uh, athletics. And there's so many different things that, uh, that the, the milestones that we understand that people have lost. And, um, and reality is it won't ever be the same. Uh, but yet God, in, through the power of the Holy Spirit, is able to bring comfort as we mourn, as we reflect, and as we trust Him. There, something I've learned over the last few years, and specifically um, within the last five months since um, my dad passing away, is that there seems to be a stigma within the church that there's, uh, and in the world in general, that uh, we want people to get over mourning really quickly. Hmm. Um, and as if it's unnatural, you're not supposed to feel badly. You're not supposed to feel exhausted. That's part of when you're grieving, you, you'll feel exhausted. That may be why you feel like you just don't want to get up off your couch today. Because know this, that pressure that you're feeling is a, a form of, of grief. And I just want to encourage you, it is natural for you to feel that. Why in the world would God have had put this, uh, said this to Isaiah and for Jesus to quote it later, he knew that we would mourn. Hmm. He knew that we would grieve. He knew that we would experience loss beyond imagination. And he made a way for us right. to have a comforter. And when I think of comforter, um, I guess I'm a good Southern girl, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think of a big bed comforter, and I'm going to want to uh, wrap it around me. Mm -hmm. um, it can even be uh, hot outside, but I have my air conditioner <laughs> on. I still put my comforter on because there's something comforting about being covered. 
They're even making weighted blankets, mm -hmm. aren't they? they are. I mean, even the weight of that comfort. And, you know, Pastor, I just pray that the Holy Spirit will literally wrap us up in this season. Hmm. Yeah. See, you may think, oh, nobody's seeing me, but even through this lens, we can say, we see you. Yeah. And we're praying that the Holy Spirit will wrap you up and you will feel his weight. And it won't be a smothering weight. It will be a comforting weight Try. that will cause you to go. <sighs> and that's really all you need. And then when it rises again and you're mm -hmm. feeling that loss and that mourning and that anxiety again, then you, you just put your hands right back out and say, Holy Spirit, welcome. I need you to comfort me in this hour, in this moment. Try. Please, Lord, comfort me. And he will because he doesn't withhold good gifts to his kiddos. And he's going to comfort us even now. That's right. As we dived into this, um, um, I want to actually kind of jump ahead. And we're actually going to continue this same look at Isaiah 61 next Wednesday night. But I want to go ahead and look at the, the end of the text that I read as we look to the very end of verse 3 that it says that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Uh, when I read that, and one of the phrases that we pull out of there, out of verse 3 there, is that, uh, that those, the trees that are there, and sometimes you'll even hear it referred to as the oaks of righteousness. And uh, several years ago, uh, Tina and I had the opportunity to go to Charleston, and there we went, and we were able to tour a plantation. And it was there on the plantation that uh, as you're entering in and you're, you're, you're coming in, and there were this, uh, this uh, gravel or dirt-lined uh, avenue, if you would, leading up to the plantation on either side of the road were these incredible, majestic oaks that uh, lined the drive. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think Avenue. it's called the Avenue of the Oaks. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it's the same place. If you remember the old uh, miniseries, series. the North and the South, the, that it was the filmed. 1980s. It was filmed here at this plantation. And, and so as we were going down, it was just in this incredible shade. It was this incredible beauty. And it, one of the things, so when I think about trees of righteousness or oaks of righteousness, my mind immediately goes back to that Charleston plantation and seeing those oaks that covered uh, the road as we were walking through and provided the strength and through all of the hurricanes and all of the storms and all of the years, they have withstood. Uh, some of them were hundreds of years old. And when we really think about that, and I, I have that image that God has planted us as oaks of righteousness. Because one of the things to remember is that part of a uh, divine or godly covenant, in fact, the very covenant that God made with Abraham, there were multiple steps that God uh, had in making that covenant with Abraham, but it was concluded or it was ended uh, in the same uh, Jewish tradition as the two members of the, in, of the people that were entering into the covenant would go and they would plant a tree together. And it is that Abrahamic covenant that we reflect upon that Abraham made with God, that after God made his covenant, Abraham went and planted a tree and that it became just like it would be between two people. It became a perpetual reminder and memorial to the covenant that had been made between Abraham and God. And uh, part of that sealing of it would be a sacrificed, a sacrificed animal. The blood of that sacrificed animal would be sprinkled upon that tree that was planted. Mm -hmm. And it is there that I can't help but think of this in Isaiah 61, uh, that he plants us as oaks of righteousness or trees of righteousness because... It was Hebrews chapter 13 um, and verses 20 and 21. And it says, Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete. That you is talking about you and I. Through the blood of the covenant, 
making us complete in every good work to do His will, working in you and I what is well-pleasing in His sight through Christ Jesus, to whom be the glory. And it is there that I can't help but just have this image of you and I as believers being planted as trees, oaks of righteousness, as being a splendor or a demonstration not of our own strength, but of the strength of Christ who is within us. And that the blood of Christ is sprinkled upon our lives. He covers us. He has washed us. And that God and through His power, we are able to be, just as it says there, the planting of the Lord. It means that we've been planted by Him. Uh, the planting of the Lord that He may be glorified, that God may be glorified through us. And through the ups and downs, through the stresses, through the anxieties, through the mourning, through the... Uh, through everything of this, of, of, of this season and, and whatever it may be that you're facing in your life, my prayer is that you are reminded tonight that you have been planted by the Lord and that you, if you are a believer tonight and you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have entered into a covenant with Him and His blood has been sprinkled upon you and that you become that memorial, that perpetual memorial, the reminder of the salvation of Christ that we can find in Him and through Him. So as Pastor was talking, I, I wanted to um, really remind us that these oaks of righteousness, it all started with one acorn, just one seed. That's where it started. And many times we, we look at each other and go, wow, they're a lot stronger than I am. Well, they may be because maybe they're just an older oak tree than you are. Maybe you're just at the seed part of your growing. And if you're not at the seed part, maybe you're not even the seed yet. Maybe it's time for you to say, Jesus, I need you to be uh, a part of my life. I believe you and I want you in my life. And that's where it starts. That's the simple sinner's prayer. Forgive me, Lord, and help me just to love on you and love people. So that's where it starts with the seed and then the process as we grow in, in his word and in conversation with him that we like to call prayer <laughs> and in community with mm -hmm. other believers that then we become a sapling and we quite maybe haven't made it to the avenue of the oaks yet because mm -hmm. the keeper of the grounds is not going to put the sapling there on the avenue of the oaks just yet. But there, Father God is the gardener. He's going to take mm -hmm. care of you as the sapling. He's going to keep giving you nutrition through his word and through his presence. And eventually we get to a point where uh, the Father, Son, and the Spirit, and they look at each other and they go, well, they're ready. Mm -hmm. And they transplant us to be on that, oak, uh, that avenue of oaks. And in the original Hebrew langu language there, Pastor, that when the oaks of righteousness, it paints a picture that they are these big pillars of strength. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so um, holding uh, one another up. And so I just, I want to encourage you that it's time, an investment of time, time in relationship with the Lord, time in relationship with his word. Um, recently I've heard, well, time heals all wounds. No, it doesn't. Jesus heals wounds. He uses time, but he heals wounds. So when he's going through Isaiah 61 and he's binding up our broken heart and he's releasing us from darkness and he's putting crowns of beauty on us and oil of gladness and garments of praise, all of that is a process. And does he use time? Yes, he does. And does he want us to pursue him in that time? Yes, he does. And as we do, we grow stronger in Him. His strength becomes evident in our lives. And we can be well grounded in Him. And praise God for the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I was praying blood of Jesus over all of us that He'd sprinkle His blood on mm -hmm. us. I didn't know you were going to uh, talk about that. But I've been praying that He would do that. Not in a gross way. For those who might feel like that's weird, but for us to just be covered by Him. Amen. And so as we you know, bring this to a close this evening, I really want to just uh, remind us uh, that 
uh, allow the Lord to heal our broken hearts uh, and allow Him to be able to proclaim liberty to us if we are captive or bound physically, emotionally, spiritually, and allow Him to bring comfort to us even in our mourning. And as we do, let Him plant us as oaks of righteousness, trees of righteousness. And so because ultimately the, the reason why He wants to do that he says there in verse 3, is so that he may be glorified. And my heart and prayer through every crisis of this world, that the church, you and I, and I don't mean the Livonia Church, but I just want the, the Christian believers, you and I as a whole, will be able to be such a, a, a representation of strength and spiritual strength, even through the ups and downs, that those that are hurting and searching for answers and truth will be able to understand that there is a God who loves us, there is a God who is present, and there is a God who wants to lead us and love us. And in fact, I enjoyed just hearing yesterday uh, of one of our uh, members here at work uh, had his boss come and just uh, said, I, I haven't prayed in so long, I need some help. And I'm, I'm facing all of this. And, and so uh, the, 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 our member just began to talk to him and just led him through. And, and they had prayer. And before they knew it, the guy was apologizing for crying. And he's like, no, no, that's, you know, oh, it's wow. heartfelt. And, and that's what in seasons like this, the opportunities that exist, whether it's in our workplace or uh, on the phone or Facebook even or YouTube, wherever Family. we might be, families and that are just looking for some answers in the middle of the chaos. God is that answer, and so we need to be planted. We need to be planted as those trees uh, firmly in Christ. And so as we close in prayer tonight, I want you just to uh, just continue to be remembering those that are being impacted by the coronavirus. We have those in our own church family. We have uh, those that... Uh, that are being impacted by that, and certainly in our community. We need to ask God for protection and healing. Continue to remember uh, Billy Powell, Sarah Alexander, Tommy McGee, uh, 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 Lorene Brown. Um, we have uh, some uh, Mike Blakely. Uh, we have multiple needs uh, that have uh, Kim uh, Young um, is home. Um, she had a, a miniature stroke. Uh, the other day, but she is home from the hospital. But continue to remember Kim Young. Jessica uh, continue to remember. Oh, and congratulations to Jess Jessica Atkins. Uh, send that she had her baby today. Jackson. Little, little Jackson is here. He is doing great. Mom is doing great. But we just want to pray prayers of blessings upon uh, Miss Jessica and, and Jackson. And uh, so congratulations to them on, on, on his birth. And so we just want to go to the Lord and just ask for God's touch. All of those prayer requests that you've been sending in, we're just knowing that God is able to move in a great way. Will you pray with us tonight? God, we thank you and we praise you for your hand, for your uh, declaration that, God, that you are the one that proclaims liberty to the captives, that you come and bring comfort through the power of the Holy Spirit to us as we mourn, and that, God, that you are able to heal the brokenhearted, and so, God, as we just lay all of these requests out before you, that, God, that you will touch each and every person that is being impacted by uh, the coronavirus, God, whether they're quarantined, whether they've been diagnosed, God, that you will just bring healing. God, for those, I pray for protection, that, God, upon families and communities and our church, God, and that, Lord, that you will just provide protection, God, from being infected and from this virus. God, I pray that, Lord, for every other uh, ailment and affliction that people are dealing with, God, God, whether it's uh, shingles or heart issues or back issues, God, or, uh, or, or strokes, God, whatever it may be that, God, that people are dealing with tonight, that, God, I know that you're able to bring healing and speak that healing into their lives right now. God, touch them in a mighty way. God, no matter where we are, let your presence fill the room this very moment, God. As we just call upon you, God, and say, God, plant me. Plant me. And God, let my life be, uh, Lord, a demonstration of your blood and your atonement and your forgiveness and your grace and your strength, God. Lord, we love you tonight and we praise you. God, bless and be with each and every person that is watching this tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
God, we thank you so much for being with us and joining us. Again, like, share, uh, and that really helps us. We'll be loading this live. On, uh, we'll be loading this on YouTube in just a few moments, and so share this with family and friends. We look forward to joining you uh, throughout this week in devotions. Make sure that you check. Uh, uh, join us again for worship Sunday morning, 11 a.m. We're looking forward to a great encounter with God. God bless you, and we'll see you then. Love you, family.